Africa is growing fast. By 2030, one out of every five people on Earth will be African. And by 2050, the population of Africa will more than double from 1.2 billion to 2.5 billion people. Even for the wealthiest economies on Earth, this kind of growth would be difficult to manage. In Africa, it will stress everything. Infrastructure, public health, the rule of law, the competition for resources, agriculture, the availability of jobs. Yet, built into this population growth also lies potential. Meeting the growing demand for food, clothing and shelter, expanding infrastructure, providing services like healthcare and education, finance, even recreation, all represent economic opportunity for African entrepreneurs. Consider this, even those countries that currently export products to Africa would probably be wise to move some of the production to the continent, to be closer to their customers, to create jobs, and thereby help lower the growing emigration from Africa in search of jobs. However, the benefits that Africa and the world can gain from a growing population will not be automatic. It will depend on productive citizens and the enlightened, effective leadership necessary to create an enabling environment on the continent. Developing such citizens and leaders is the business of education. That's what we do. But the truth is, there is a severe crisis of teaching and learning on the continent. The Africa Learning Barometer, for example, identifies 12 countries, including Nigeria and Ghana, where over 30 percent of children do not meet minimum standards for learning by their third or fourth grades. The quality problem is especially vivid in higher education, with many graduates taking years to find their first formal employment. And employers, on the other hand, saying that university graduates are not well prepared and lack the critical skills necessary to secure jobs that currently exist. So here's the thing. It's not that Africa is not scaling up education. It is. Across the continent, countries are approaching full enrollment in basic education. And over the last four decades, higher education in sub-Saharan Africa has grown at double the rate of the rest of the world. So Africa is scaling up education. What hasn't been done yet, though, is to scale up quality and effectiveness. We're still teaching students to learn by rote. This is a legacy of our colonial era, which focused on training people to follow directions. Students are not encouraged to explore, to question the status quo. They're not encouraged to think critically or creatively. We're not actively fostering the values of ethics and empathy. And so our societies are burdened by rampant corruption perpetrated by some of our ed educated elite. The way we teach is wrong for today. It is even more wrong for tomorrow, given the challenges before us. And so we need to educate people differently, and we need to do it quickly. The question is, how? So there's no single answer to this question, but I'd like to share a few ideas about how we might proceed. And I'd like to share ideas, uh, especially in higher ed, where I work. The scale of the problem is so large that the solution will require the combined efforts of governments and the market, including non-profit and for-profit actors. The scale of the problem is too large for any one institution to tackle it. However, the continent will need exemplar institutions of learning clustered in East, West, Central, North and Southern Africa that serve as beacons to others, that are uncompromising in achieving quality in teaching, research and innovation, and that act as magnets 
for our best and brightest to stay on the continent. At Ashesi University in Ghana, we have pioneered one model that has inspired others and is achieving significant results. Each year, nearly 100 percent of our graduates receive job offers or grad school offers within six months of graduation. One out of every 25 of our graduates starts a business, and most importantly, nine out of 10 stay on the continent, working and affecting the lives of millions. We have done this by implementing a multidisciplinary curriculum that emphasizes critical thinking and ethical values, that encourages broad perspectives, and that makes room for in-depth expertise in a few areas, currently focusing on engineering, computer science and business management. Ten years ago, our students pioneered an honor system that put them in charge of maintaining a campus culture of integrity, and more importantly, gives them the practice to be the ethical citizens and leaders that our society needs. All students, every single one of them, engages in community service, building the empathy and the confidence that comes from tackling real problems, solving real problems in community. We are proud of the progress that we've achieved. But this is only one model. There are other institutions of excellence, centers of excellence, around the continent, and this is as it should be. Second, we need to amplify our efforts by working together. By 2030, the UN estimates that African university enrollments will grow to 12 million. So between now and then, we'll educate perhaps 30 million students cumulatively over the period. If through collaboration, we could improve the quality of education for these students, we would make a tremendous difference on the continent and in the world. And so two years ago, we began an experiment at Ashesi to explore what such a collaboration might look like in Africa. And we reached out to our colleague institutions across the continent, invited them to join us in conversations and workshops around curriculum design, the use of technology to amplify the work of our faculty, how we foster relationships with the, in, with the business sector, with industry, in order to enable job placement and the creation of businesses. And we are learning a lot from each other. We call it the Education Collaborative, and it continues to grow. Finally, as a way of providing external motivation for institutions, I believe that African governments and educational leaders need to come together and agree on a continent-wide evaluation and ranking system that focuses on students and their growth and that focuses on impact in our countries. Most global ranking systems today are not designed around the unique context of Africa, the unique context of our universities. An Africa-centered ranking system would provide the direction and strengthen the motivation of leaders and faculty to focus on outcomes for students and for our society. Are our students really learning? Are they finding meaningful jobs after graduation? Are our graduates ethical? Do they have empathy? Are they trustworthy? How prepared are they to start businesses of their own? Are we writing for journals only, or is our research affecting and making a difference in economic, social and technological advancement on the continent? We have seen the evidence from efforts in other sectors, such as the success of the global movement to address HIV, AIDS and neglected tropical diseases, that a whole systems approach is such a terrific way and high-impact way to solve the hardest problems. Building and maintaining strong institutions, collaborative action, and the right metrics to evaluate and guide our progress are all necessary for success. We can do the same for African education. We must do the same for African education, because the specter of 
a billion poorly educated, unemployed or underemployed Africans would raise unacceptable consequences for the world. On the other hand, a productive workforce living in societies managed by ethical and effective leaders would be good not only for Africa, but for the world. Developing such citizens and leaders is the business of education. I believe that a solution is within our grasp, a solution is within our capabilities today. What remains is for us all to proceed with conviction and with determination. Thank you very much.